Risk management is a huge and rich topic. And for me, one of the most important topics in project management. There's a huge amount to say, but in this video, I want to focus on five top tips for great risk management. Tip number one, when you want to identify risks at the start of your project, there are many tools you can use, but one of my favorites is the SPECTRES framework. SPECTRES is an acronym that reminds us of eight potential sources of risk, the SPECTRES that might haunt your project. So what does SPECTRES stand for? S stands for social or sociological. There are going to be a number of risks that arise from society or from the social interactions among stakeholders and members of your team and members of the governance organization, the client, the customer. So think about society, think about social risks, think about sociology. P stands for political risks. And it's easy to think about political risks with a capital P, national politics, local politics, regional politics, and the implications of that in terms of legislation and regulation. However, for many projects, the real political risks are much more local. They're within the organization, they're among the people and among the stakeholders with which the project concerns itself. The first E of Spectres stands for economic risks. These are the financial risks that can impact upon your project. And yes, they can come from the wider economical issues within your uh, organization, within perhaps even your country. However, again, these are probably more likely to be the financial risks that relate to things like exchange rate fluctuations, cost of materials, cost of labor, those sorts of things. C stands for commercial risks. These are to do with the commercial environment within which you and your client organization exist. They're the competitive pressures that you're under. They're the supply chain issues, everything to do with the commercial nature of the organization and therefore of the project. T stands for technology and luckily nothing ever goes wrong with technology. So there are no technological risks, but just in case there are, we have T inspectors to remind us that technology can sometimes let us down or in fact become superseded during the life cycle of a project. R stands for regulation. Most organizations are subject to a welter of different regulatory requirements and standards, and the same is therefore true of the projects that they sponsor. So be aware of regulatory risks uh, like health and safety legislation, diversity legislation, compliance with quality standards, all sorts of regulatory risks. And thinking about regulation, that brings us to the second E, E for environmental risks. And again, it's very easy to think about the environment with a capital E because those issues are very present in many of our minds at the moment. The global environment is a big risk point for a large number of major projects, but for many projects, the environmental risks are again, a lot more local. Think about light conditions, about air conditions, think about contamination. Those sorts of things are going to be the sort of risks that many projects have to deal with. And finally, the last S of spectres can stand either for safety or security risks. Where people can get harmed, where data can be breached, where buildings can be broken into, we have safety, we have security risks. So my tip number one is to use the SPECTRES framework to help you identify sources of potential risk on your project. Tip number two, as a professional project manager, wouldn't it be great if you already knew a large number of the risks that are going to come up on your next project? And you probably do, but make it easy on yourself. Keep a running list of all the risks you identify on all your projects so that when you come to another project, 
you've already got a categorized list of potential risks to consider. And as you complete that project, add new risks to that list, review the categorization to see if it's still the most useful categorization you've got. And that gives you a checklist to start your next project with. Tip number three. When we evaluate risks, we talk about likelihood of them occurring and impact if they do. And sometimes it's valuable to think about the type of impact rather than just give an impact rating on a scale 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Maybe we want to talk about a very specific impact because for some projects, what really matters is the impact of risks on the budget. Or maybe what matters is the impact of risks on the schedule or perhaps on reputation or perhaps on health and safety or perhaps on the quality of your deliverables or the scope of functionality that you're able to achieve. Perhaps the risks are going to impinge upon security, maybe data protection or possibly on the environment. It's often worthwhile thinking about what really matters to your project and then creating an impact scale based on that principal factor. Tip number four, terminate, treat, transfer and tolerate. That's a pretty familiar framework for many people to the four main strategies for handling risk. And that framework maps nicely onto the PMI's own framework that you'll find in the PMBOK guide. There you'll find it articulated as avoid, mitigate, transfer and accept. But whether you call it mitigate or treat, that seeming single strategy is actually two strategies. Because if you think about it, a risk has two principal characteristics. It's uncertainty that can affect outcome. And therefore, a risk has likelihood and it has impact. And you can mitigate the impact and reduce the likelihood. You can treat both. Therefore, there's two strategies to reduce likelihood and to reduce impact. And if you're not aware of that, you can often miss out on valuable specific tactics that you can use to reduce the risk profile of your project. Tip number five. My final tip is about estimating the likelihood of a risk materializing. And it's very straightforward. Keep it simple because human beings are absolutely rubbish at estimating the likelihood of uncertain events. And the less likely they are, then the poorer our estimate is. And partly that's because our estimates of likelihood get wrapped up into how recently we are aware of something happening or how serious we think that thing is or how much we dread it. And therefore we get our estimates very badly wrong. So avoid the precision trap and keep it very, very simple. My favorite scale for many projects, even fairly large ones is low, medium and high or very low, low, medium, high and very high. If you're going to use numerical scales or percentages or some sort of logarithmic scale, then you have to really understand how statistics and probability theory work. And very few of us actually do. And don't, by the way, be tempted to use words like possible, plausible, probable, likely, highly unlikely, because if you try to be too specific in your language, then you'll find that the words you use, although they sound very specific and precise, mean different things to different people. An obvious scale, three or five points, such as very low, low, medium, high and very high likelihood is not only the simplest, but often the best way to estimate likelihood on your project. These five tips have been inspired by our Kindle exclusive ebook, Risk Management for Project Managers. And in that ebook, there are six chapters. Chapter one is how risk management will make you a better project manager. Chapter two, indispensable guide to the sources of project risk. Chapter three, let's do better than just brainstorming more ways to identify risk. Chapter four, a guide to simple risk analysis. 
Chapter 5, Risk Response Strategies, a full roundup. Yes, we'll look at all seven possible risk response strategies. And Chapter 6, How to Build a Robust Project Risk Culture in Eight Steps. Plus, there's an appendix on how to scale your risk management process to adapt it to the nature of your project. And I'll put links to the Kindle ebook in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Why not hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any future videos. And in the meantime, look forward to seeing you in the next one.